record. <laughs> I got to got to say yes to this. All right, so hello guys. Uh, welcome to the second class. I think Martin did a great job with the first one. So I'm going to follow in some big footsteps here. Um, but very similar to Martin, growing your own food, it's like a supplement, you know, it's, it's what you put into your body that makes you, you are what you eat, so they say. So I kind of see this on two levels. I see it both as like a nutrition kind of thing for your body and what's good for you, but also on like a mental or a more spiritual level. You're, you're, you're contributing to your own growth as well. Like if you eat something that you helped grow, it will help grow you as a person as well, not just athletically, but in all sorts of ways, mentally, spiritually, uh, all that good stuff. So I'm not that great of an expert yet at growing my own food. My dad is. Uh, he's actually the one that's teaching me how to do a lot of this stuff because he grew up on a farm when he was small uh, back in Poland. So for him, it comes very naturally. For me, there's a lot of things I'm still learning. So it's a process, you know, and I'm really, really enjoying it. And I would suggest all of you to try it as well, because it's it just opens your mind up. You, you, you kind of notice things about food, about nature, even how plants grow by doing it with your own hands and really getting hands on and seeing for yourself how this kind of stuff works. So yeah, again, not an expert, but I'm trying my best here. Uh, kind of the first thing, the most important part about growing your own food is the preparation. You first have to prepare a nice plot of land. So like I have behind me over here, kind of transformed my whole backyard into this nice, cultivatable sort of soil and it's hard work it wasn't easy um you know i had to take this shovel over here and you could use whatever you want you know but what i basically did is i'd go and i'd stomp into the grass because this used to be grass back here i'd stomp into the grass cut little squares and i just did that over and over and over until i got this whole plot of land done it took me about three days you know maybe working three or four hours per day in the sun obviously in a day like today it might be a little easier because it's shady but if you like the sun you know that's another very positive thing about doing this stuff you get a lot of sunshine you get that exposure to sunlight as you're working out in your field or whatever it may be um right so i cut my little plots there the little squares and then i flipped over the grass so the roots were up on top and the grass is underneath. And the kind of thinking behind this is like, you have a lot of nice soil underneath, hopefully. I mean, it depends where you live, but over here we had decent soil in our backyard. And then by flipping the grass, you're, you're essentially gonna compost the grass back into the earth. So you're using what was already viable, you know, this green stuff, and you're using it to nurture the next set of plants that are gonna be growing here. And in fact, I'll get onto composting a little bit later because uh, I don't know if you can see, but back there I have a compost bin as well. So after flipping everything and having the roots on top, obviously that's not a great medium for growing. And if you were to wait a season or two, those roots would also decompose and be regenerated back into normal soil. But if you wanna really start growing right away, you're gonna to have to speed that process up a bit or potentially put a top coat over it to have the roots decay as you're growing your vegetables on top of them. So after that, you know, I kind of mulched them up a little bit, again, using this to cut them up. Uh, and then I put some fresh soil on top and, you know, we can really get into talking about soil because I love it. It's like a science stuff is pretty amazing. Um, right. Again, I'm not really a super huge expert on it, but I know there's sort of three nice components to what makes soil, what makes soil viable for growing. Um, and of course, it also depends on what kind of crop you're trying to grow. 
So there's all sorts of factors. And I'm not going to get into all of them right now, but like I said, those three components are sand, clay, and organic matter. So it could be bark from a tree. It could be grass that you're decomposing and composting. It could be whatever. But those are the three main components. So sand doesn't really do much, but it does help with drainage. So you do need some in there because uh, you don't want your soil to be completely waterlogged. The clay is the opposite of sand. It sort of holds stuff together and it holds onto water a lot. It, it blocks the drainage. So by combining those two, you know, you can find that right ratio for your drainage. So you have the right water contents in your soil as you're growing your stuff. And then the organic matter is what the plants actually absorb nutrients off of. Uh, it also holds onto water fairly well. So if you like growing some crops, maybe like um, peppers or something that prefers a little bit of a drier climate, you would want to mix in some more sand, especially if you had a lot of like organic matter or clay. Like for example, over here, my soil, if you could see, it has a lot of clay in it. So it's this clumpy stuff and it'll clump together like that. So that's a sign that there's a lot of clay, but there's also some sand in there. Um, and that's just what earth gave me back here. Uh, but then, like I said, after I flipped my earth, I then put a little bit of organic matter on top. We put some compost that we bought, uh, sort of rejuvenated a little bit because, you know, grass will kind of grow in anything, honestly. Uh, but vegetables need a little more nutrients to grow than grass does. Uh, so yeah, um, it's a lot to think about. And you could really, really dive deep into it when you really, really want to. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just a beautiful world of all sorts of variables. And you can get really scientific with it. I know I have a friend, uh, his father buys like all sorts of little tools and measurement stuff to really measure the pH of the soil and all this crazy wild stuff. But if you're like me, you're a little bit lazier. Uh, you like, you know, doing stuff by feel a little bit more. Just go do it. Just go do it. You don't have to get all that fancy equipment, all that testing stuff. Just get a feel for your soil. Feel it in your hands. You know, you could really look at it, smell it, whatever it may be, to get a feel of like what you have in your soil. Is it a lot of sand? Is it a lot of clay? Is it a lot of organic matter? Uh, and you could tell by the color of it. You know, like right now, this is kind of a, a light brown. When you wet it, it becomes a dark brown. Um, if it's more grayish, that could be a sign that there's more clay. If it's a little more reddish, again, that could be clay. If it's more like blackish, you probably have a lot of organic matter in there because when stuff decomposes, it tends to turn like a dark, dark brown, dark black. Uh, and then the sand, yeah, you just kind of feel it in your fingers and you'll see little grains of sand in there. So that's the soil. I mean, I can go talking about soil forever and ever and ever. And it's really like one of the most important parts of this. Uh, it's like really the foundation of it all. You need good soil to grow good crops. Beyond that, the other two factors you need are also water and sunlight. So those are other two factors you got to control for. Water is easy to control because you could just water it whenever you want. If you have a hose in your backyard. I mean, it'll rain a lot sometimes. So you won't even have to work. It's like the earth is just taking care of it for you. But usually, uh, like especially last year, it was a little drier. I'd have to come out every day, sometimes even twice a day to water it. So, and this is getting more into like the spiritual side of things. Uh, you really have to take care of this stuff for it to turn out successful. You have to put a lot of care and love and you gotta nurture it for it to grow properly. If you don't, it's just gonna die on you. So, like I said, I mean, this could be good for everyone. Just grow a little crop. It doesn't have to be a big thing like I have here. Even if you make a little small pot, it could even be inside. I mean, people grow like tomato plants and stuff inside by their windows. Just something to care for, something to put some time into, something that you need a little bit of discipline to, to really nurture and grow. 
and then the benefits of that, it's going to come back onto you. And you're going to end up seeing that you're going to grow yourself while you're growing your plants as well. So there's water. Then there's sunlight. Um, if you have hedges like this, maybe you have to consider what kind of crops you grow and how you orientate your land. So you have to plan out before what you want to grow and where you want to grow it, depending on what kind of sunshine you get. Over there on the other side, I also have a, a shed and there's a neighbor's tree as well, which blocks the sunlight as the sun comes down and sets. So I can't grow crops here that are super um, like hungry for light, but things like tomatoes, um, potato plants, especially stuff that likes to grow in shade. So maybe like radishes or carrots, stuff that's lower to the ground. It doesn't grow very high up. Perfect for that. This is like a perfect area for that. And of course, your situations, whatever you have in your backyard or wherever you're trying to grow it, that sunlight will dictate what kind of plants are good to grow there as well. So before I drag on too long, because like I said, I mean, I could talk about this for hours upon hours. It's just so interesting to me. Um, kind of wrap it up here. So the whole purpose of kind of growing your own food is to find some place to kind of put a lot of love and care into and grow something that you're then going to consume. It's really about like the whole cycle of things, you know? Uh, if you put out love into the world, you'll get that love back. And this is a very kind of concrete way to feel that. Um, you know, put a lot of love into your plants, put a lot of thought and care, and you come out every day and you water them and you, you can even talk to them if you want. I mean, you can really get into it. And you'll see, it'll come back to you. You'll feel great. You'll get really, really good tasting food. I mean, like the tomatoes we, we grew last year. I mean, not to brag, but whew, they were so good. Um, <laughs> and we got a lot of them too. Same with the potatoes. So it's, it's just so rewarding. And, and it's a really concrete way to, to see the growth and to see what patience and, and all of these nice virtues to have. It's a great way to see them in action. And you know, if you're wondering, well, how does this connect to me being an athlete? Well, that's exactly it. You know, the same way you want to take care of your body and be patient with it, but put effort in it every single day, just a little bit. It's the same here. So if you practice it here, you could then bring it back, the same lessons, apply it to your own body. Hell, even apply it to other things. You can apply it to school. You can apply it to your job. You have a car. Take care of your car the same way you take care of your plants. It's all interconnected. So that's what it's really all about. Um, yeah, you know, and like I said, you don't have to get complicated. I didn't know anything like two years ago. I just went, I started doing it. Still don't know a lot, but I know a lot more than I used to because I put in a little bit of effort every single day. So try it. It could be in your house, it could be in a little tiny pot, little flower pot where you grow like one tiny tomato plant that maybe grows two tomatoes. You can do a big production like this. That'll make, you can even make your whole backyard into a farm if you want. It's really up to you, you know, but I do encourage each and every one of you to try and grow one plant this summer and see what it's really like. So yeah, that wraps up this uh, little presentation here. Hope you guys enjoyed. The plant grows you. Very much so. It's very much so like that. Does anyone have any questions, by the way? Also, I'm on my phone. So uh, if anyone's writing in chat, I, I'm not sure if I'll be able to see it. So you might have to speak up. I have a question. Sure. What's the difference between a supermarket tomato and a grown tomato? Um, well, it depends how you look at it, you know. Honestly, 
it's way more satisfying to grow your own plant and your own tomato. Like maybe it's a little bit of a placebo effect and you'll think, oh yeah, this thing tastes way better. Objectively, it probably doesn't really taste that much better than a supermarket tomato. But just knowing you grew it yourself, like that just puts it on another level. Oh, I have another question too, actually. All right. How do you uh, prevent animals from eating your crops? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, you don't really. You just have to kind of let them eat some. And that's just part of nature. Like you're going to lose some of your harvest, whether you like it or not. Uh, like last year, squirrels ate all of our cucumbers. Uh, we had a gopher who's living under the shed. Maybe he's still there. I don't know. Uh, he ate like all our radishes, a lot of the root vegetables, the stuff that was low to the floor. He just dug up, ate it all. We didn't get any carrots. We didn't get any um, any onions. So that sucked. He didn't get to the potatoes, though, because I guess they grew a little bit deeper. Uh, and maybe if you have a dog, like now we have a new puppy, so maybe she'll kind of like fend them away. But she's been digging in this thing, too. So she's already dug up some seeds. Here, I'll kind of show you guys you see how stuff is kind of starting to grow here so this is just the beginning but there was a couple of rows that she did dig up and nothing's growing there right now so we probably lost those seeds you just have to try again cool it's really too much to explain in like a short 30, 45 minute video. Like you just have to go do it yourself and spend the whole summer messing around, making all sorts of mistakes and really learn from it. Oh yeah, and I didn't show you guys the compost either. It's actually super cool. Big pile of poop. Like, cool. yeah. So we built this big box thing and we throw everything in there. Like literally our eggs, uh, any kind of scraps we have, the bread goes in here, even some like cardboard and paper goes in here as well. And again, I could spend like hours and hours talking about the science behind composting, but yeah, it's just amazing because earth will recycle everything, you know, nothing, nothing on this planet is a mistake, literally nothing. Everything always finds a way to recycle and start anew. So even in death, you know, it's not the end. It's just a new beginning cycle of life cycle of life it's really beautiful like i said i mean man this has really turned into like a big passion of mine it's just um, it's really eye-opening to try and grow your own stuff again highly recommend all of you should try it even if it's a tiny tiny little plant just try it awesome. all right so all right i'll stop recording then all right